Awesome. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Zero Waste 101 Holiday Cheer Workshop. So at Waste Free Earth, we are reinventing how society produces and consumes waste by creating award-winning systems that empower others to incorporate zero waste behaviors. By doing so, we are building a business culture that prioritizes zero waste systems over the current status quo of burying single-use items as trash and landfills. So my name is Marina McCoy. I'm the founder and CEO of Waste Free Earth. I founded Waste Free Earth after seeing a lack of education and successful implementations of zero waste strategies within the event industry and really in all industries. So I quickly became obsessed with waste and started living zero waste myself six years ago and began traveling the country setting up systems for the event industry. Yeah, and I'm Alexandra Thompson. I'm the lead project manager for Waste Free Earth. Marina and I met about two years ago in Memphis at a festival, um, and we've been working together ever since. And together, the two of us have over 14 years of experience in the sustainability industry. So how the workshop is going to go, we're gonna present for about 45 minutes, then have a live Q&A. We have polling questions throughout this, which I'll send our first one now to get an idea of how green you are and what we're working with. So if you could fill that out while I go through the workflow. So please keep yourself muted throughout the pre presentation. Use the raise hand feature for questions during Q&A. If you have questions throughout the presentation, feel free to drop them in the chat. We'll, we won't be answer, answering them during the presentation. Hopefully we go over them. If we don't, then we'll answer them in the Q&A. We would love to see you during the live Q&A, but we totally understand if you want to keep your video off. And please switch to your side-by-side -side mode under the view option so you could see me and Alex together while talking. And we will be sending this out to you all and posting it as a recording. So don't feel like you have to take all these notes because we'll, we'll send it out for you and you'll get the slides along with it. Awesome, thank you everyone for filling out the survey. Ooh, we're almost there. Alex, if you wanna to switch to the next one. Yep. So now more than ever, consumption of single-use plastic has actually increased by over 250% since the outbreak of COVID-19. And as a result, residential waste is expected to increase by 30%. So we see this as an opportunity We've always needed to kind of tackle how much waste we're producing and consuming, but now more than ever, the systems that we have in place are just proving that they're not working. So where do we go from here? Um, we will say it's important to note that no matter how hard you try, you're going to be producing more waste than normal, and that is okay. Um, the whole purpose of this workshop and our workshops in general is to walk you through the steps you can take to reduce your waste where you have the ability to do so. So let's talk about the impact of waste. Before we do so, I'll share the results so you can see how everyone is doing. Looks like we have a lot of people in medium green and the biggest barrier is saying it takes too much time. So hopefully these tactics help you with that and limited access, definitely. What do you do with your food scraps? It looks like a lot of you are composting, which is awesome. And when you do shopping, do you look for sustainable brands when you can? So great, thank you for doing that. All right. So the waste epidemic. Every year in the United States, 63 million pounds of food gets wasted. Yearly, well daily, 4.5 pounds of landfill waste is produced by the average American and 30% of the world's waste comes from the United States, but we hold only 4% of the population. And currently only 9% of plastic is getting recycled worldwide. Yeah, and the holiday season honestly makes it way worse. So there is a 25% increase in landfill waste produced during um, the time frame between Thanksgiving and New Year's. Each year there's two 
1.65 billion Christmas cards that are sold and they could actually fill a football field 10 stories high. Um, there's 15 million used Christmas trees that end up in landfills across the United States each year. And 40% of all battery sales occur during the holiday season. And we think this is really important to note just because batteries are one of those hard to recycle items that can't be recycled curbside. And so when you're thinking about gift giving and giving gadgets and, and tech, thinking about uh, renewable or uh, rechargeable batteries. But so we're gonna do another quick poll. Um, which of these items as a game do you think is recyclable? So for reference, A is um, wrapping paper, B is a holiday card, C is uh, gift bags, and then D is aluminum tins. And feel free to drop in the chat. I actually forgot to update this poll. So write it in the chat and we'll go over them. Some, oops, some got sent to me privately. Looks like D is a favorite. Alex, do you want to go? Yeah. So <laughs> it's actually a little bit of a trick question. So D is recyclable if it's cleaned. So this item, this picture of D is not clean enough. This would contaminate the waste stream. So it has to be pretty darn clean um, for it to be recyclable. And actually B as a, a card could be recyclable if it's plain paper. Um, once you start to add like the glitter and the glue and the lamination to cards, they no longer become recyclable. Um, so that was a little bit of a trick question. <laughs> so now we're gonna talk about the foundational waste-free behaviors. So at Waste Free Earth, we have this waste-free living timeline that we really like to go over every time we teach a workshop because before you get into all the other stuff, it's really important to lay the foundation and to always think about waste differently because that's our mission here is reinventing waste. So first, you wanna inventory your waste. Second, you wanna list three things to eliminate. Three, you wanna list three things to reduce. Four, swap it out. And five, collect your waste. And we'll be going through these in detail. Yeah, so like Marina said, the first one is to inventory your waste. So going through your trash can and looking at what you're throwing away. That's the first step in figuring out what the problem is, is uh, realizing what you actually dispose of. So we have three waste streams that we um, prioritize. And the first one is compost. So food scraps, uncoated paper, plants. Second is recycling. So your plastics ones and twos, the glass, the aluminum and then landfill. So like your plastic bags, your plastic wrappers, like small plastic cups, like for yogurt. So really identifying what exactly you are throwing away. Mm -hmm. And you could do an all-star, be an all-star and go through your cabinets and refrigerator and really start to identify which free streams. I made a spreadsheet about six years ago when I was in school. So I'll be more than happy to share that with you if you want. And then once you have a better idea of what you are throwing away, you can list three things to eliminate. So this might seem like a big step at first, but there are a lot of things that we've accepted into our daily life that we haven't questioned in a while. They just become habits. Um, so three things that we say are really easy initially is, you know, promotional mailings, paper plates, candy and gum. Like for me, I um, support a lot of different nonprofits and I get like mailings all the time about what awesome work they're doing and, and calendars. And it's really awesome. And I'm glad that I get those things, but having so many of them, they just clutter my desk and I don't use them. So it would be best if I, that I did just reach out to the nonprofits and say, Hey, appreciate the good work. I'm still going to donate, but please don't send me any mail. Um, then so that's just like one easy thing that you might not be thinking of just you can eliminate right away that you didn't ever really ask for. And list three things to reduce. This is one of my favorite examples because when I used to eat yogurt, I had all of these mini yogurt containers and I didn't even think about it because I thought that it was really convenient when I was in school, going to college and spending late nights in the library. 
then it dawned on me one day that I could buy like the bigger size of it. So I started buying those instead and slowly faded out having the single use ones and just made my own yogurt parfaits. We really like people to repeat step two and three as much as they can. And we understand that you can't eliminate everything from your daily habits or monthly habits. So it's important to start reducing where you can and knowing that that's still a big effort and it won't make a difference. Swapping it out, we have this at the end of, well, close to the end of our presentation with the foundational skills because living zero waste lately has become really consumer based and that's not true zero waste. There's all these new brands coming out, which is great in theory about sustainable alternatives, but in reality, it's best for you to rethink your waste and actually reuse it as much as possible. You could reuse your own Ziploc bags that you already have. You shouldn't be going out and buying new things when there's stuff already at your house. But these are some simple swaps that you can make once you use all the other stuff up. So reusable bags, Instead of plastic wrap, you could use bees wrap. That's one of our favorite things, and it's local to Vermont. Using reusable water bottles, which you could also get at the thrift store with hankies and reusable bags. I love my hanky, and I'll get into that more in the presentation. And using reusable utensils that you could bring with you, you could take them from your drawer in the kitchen. And then once you run out of the Ziploc bags and you can't reuse them anymore by washing them, switch over to silicone reusable ones. Yeah, and if you do decide to buy sustainable items, keeping in mind that you don't have to buy them all at once or throw out everything that you have and buy all at once. Um, I have a monthly subscription to a company called Mighty Nest and each month for $12, they send me a sustainable swap. So it's a really easy way for me to like slowly incorporate um, newer items for things that I just didn't have before. So like the first one I remember that they sent were uh, dr our wool dryer balls. Um, and those are like a $35 item that I got for 12. So just like thinking about things um, and they take, you take a survey before you um, sign up. So they know I did not need any more reusable water bottles and they haven't sent me one. So it's like all about still being like that mindful consumer. And so once you've started to um, reduce and eliminate and swap out, then you can start to collect and inventory your waste. And we say do this short term. It does not have to be a long term yearly thing like try for a week, try for a month. And then you can start by picking certain things. So I want to see how much plastic I produce for a week. And so I'm going to collect it all in my jar. Um, it's a really great way to see visually how much waste you are producing because like as human behavior, we like to believe that we're doing better than we are. And then when you see it in a jar sitting on your kitchen counter or on your desk, it really just illuminates where progress can be made. Yeah, we have gotten used to just out of sight, out of mind, and just that human behavior. When we consume something, we just immediately discard of it. So although you might think that you're not producing that much waste, once you hold on to it, you really get to see where your waste is coming from. And as you know, you guys from BSET know, we did a plastic challenge in January. And when people signed up, we had a half gallon mason jar. And a lot of people said that, oh, like, I won't fill this up. And then after the first week, people realized that they were producing more trash than they thought of. Because again, like we're just easily discarding things either on the go, so you're not seeing it in your actual home trash can, or like, again, we're not thinking about it. And I've been collecting my waste on and off for six years. There are years when I could fit all my waste into a small mason jar. And then there's years like this year with COVID where I have a bag full of trash. And we also want to acknowledge doing this stuff does like it goes with accessibility and also privilege. Like I have the financial ability to like support these systems, but because of that privilege, I want to support them financially, these systems, so that's more accessible to people in the long run. And we have types of composting here at the end, but it's really something that can be started today in a few hours or tomorrow. So we don't include it on our Waste for Living timeline specifically as any certain phase, but um, there's four common uh, co types of composting these days. 
Um, the first one is worm composting, and it's really great if you have um, small space, you can put it under your sink or in a cabinet. And this is really just for your food and produce scraps. So like if you cook a lot, um, the worms will actually break them down um, in the bin. And then a tumbler, this one is pretty low maintenance. You can find these tumblers secondhand or at home improvement stores. You literally open the lid, you throw your food scraps in, your yard scraps, and then you just tumble it every couple of days. And that tumbling motion is what creates the compost. And so like I said, that one's like really low maintenance. And if you have space in your backyard or in your garage, it's a great option. Um, I do backyard composting. So I found my backyard composter on Craigslist for about $15. It is a little bit more labor intensive, but I like to say it's a labor of love. Um, I do actually enjoy um, getting in there and like stirring the compost myself and pouring it in there about once a week. And so um, we're, we're waste nerds, so that makes sense. Um, but you can set them up in your backyard or in your garden. I know some people who put it directly in their garden so it's easy to spread into um, once the compost is ready. And then there's pick up and drop off services. So you don't actually have to make the compost and use it yourself. You can actually donate your food scraps to other organizations or companies. Yeah, and that's a method that I, <clears throat> sorry, have solely used because when I lived out in Tahoe, it's, the bears are pretty active out there. So having a backyard compost wasn't really an option. And then when I moved back to Vermont, I just didn't have the ability to make another backyard compost or honestly put the effort into it. <laughs> so I uh, used the pickup services. And then when I moved to Williston, I was just dropping it off. And even when I lived out of my van, I had the compost bucket in my van and that would get really hot, but it still didn't smell. So people get intimidated by the compost smell, as Alex said, but as long as you are keeping it sealed and adding some paper into it, it really doesn't smell. Now we'll get into the zero waste holiday tips, which you guys have come for. So before we get going with that, I'll send you our next poll, which is about Christmas trees. So what do you think is better? A fake plastic tree, a real tree, or a planted tree? All right, so Alex, you could go to the next one. Now we're gonna be going into the decor. So I'll share with you the results. You guys are on a good train, the plantable tree. So we'll go through why that is a good option. So we have this good, better, best model at Waste for Europe because we understand that not everyone can jump into the best option. And the best option is best option for now. It doesn't mean that'll be the best option a couple of years from now, because the sustainability industry is always changing and we're always getting new facts. And by having this model, it makes it more accessible to people wherever they're at in their timeline. So the good option is buying a fake tree from a secondhand or discount store to use for years. And don't forget to check your local marketplaces like Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace. I get a lot of stuff from there really discounted. Try your best to avoid buying a new plastic tree because that's one of the worst things that you could do. Better is buying a cut tree because for every tree that is, hard, that is cut down, they actually are required to plant two trees, especially if you're in an area just like Bur Burlington oh. and a lot of other towns, it actually gets turned into mulch or composted. So trees are a, a renewable resource because of that in itself. And best is buying a live tree to plant, or you could rent one from a farm and then they replant it year after year, which is really cool. Yeah, and just to point out for all of the following recommendations that we have, if you already have a fake tree, or if you already have these things and you don't need new things, we highly encourage you to use what you have. Um, like as a fundamental practice of zero waste, we're not encouraging to you to go out and buy something, but if you have to, or if you're at that phase where the things that you have are broken and you need new things, then this is where these phases come in. Um, so getting into decor, 
Um, so a good option would be to buy decor through that discount or liquidation center or to choose from sustainable retailers that you know are going to um, ship without plastic or that are local and you can pick up um, all those kinds of things. A better option would be to buy secondhand decor. And again, like looking at those online marketplaces, uh, over the years I've seen really cool like ornament swap events. And so if you wanna do something like that post pandemic, but really again, encouraging everyone that attends to like bring an ornament that they already own to then swap and not buy an ornament. Um, and then to also repurpose other holiday decor. Um, and then the best option would be to use those all natural and compostable materials like popcorn or dried fruit. Um, I don't know if you've seen it, but like orange slices are all the rage this holiday season. So if you want to make your own um, all natural decor, that's a great place to start. Um, and then when it comes to the lights, so the good option would be to buy solar charge lights and LED lights and then again looking for them at the discount and liquidation store. And especially if you are in need, a great time to look for these items is going to be after the holidays because once it hits like December 28th, 29th, um, the stores are going to be getting cleared out and whatever doesn't get sold is going to be sent to those discount or liquidation stores to save them from the landfill. So again, if you're thinking ahead of next year, you know that your lights are bad and you need some next year, like looking after the holidays at the discount liquidation stores. Um, the better option would be to like buy lights secondhand through the online marketplace of swaps or overstock stores. And then the best option would be to skip the lights and just use all natural or compostable decor like the cranberry and popcorn garland. Um, those are really fun ways to turn it into an activity, especially with the people in your household if you're looking for new holiday traditions this year. All right, so now we're gonna get into the gifting for the holiday season. All right, and then as we go through this, we have a poll for how do you shop usually? There we go, and we'll share that. All right, so I'll let you guys answer it as the poll is out. Awesome, and Alex, you could go to the next one and I'll announce it after this. Great. So gifting in our good, better, best model is buying versatile products and really making sure that they're functional and they're not just meant for one thing and from sustainable brands and small businesses. Better is buying, again, the versatile functional products, but at like a secondhand store. And that's when things get to be a little bit more personable and one of a kind because it's hard to find the same thing at a secondhand store. So that has a little bit of a special meaning and then the last resort for the better option is going to those liquidation centers. We have it here in Vermont, which is actually the Vermont discount store. It's really awesome. I've actually got my bed there for really cheap. Best is gift experiences. And that doesn't mean just live experiences since that's a little bit limited right now due to COVID, but you could do an Airbnb experience and like be making this awesome Spanish dinner as people over in Brazil together over virtual experiences, which is really cool. Doing activities and just spending time together, either in person or online, whatever you feel more comfortable with, and it doesn't have to cost any money. Packaging, so right now the big rage is having um, reusable scarf ones or like any type of fabric. And there's actually new companies coming out with that. But we just wanna say that that isn't the best option to use, especially if you're buying it new, because then it's, unless the person's actually going to reuse it, it's just gonna be discarded or just sitting in their shelf or drawer for however long. But if you already have the fabric or you're getting it secondhand, then yeah, that's a great option. Better is using old newspaper or paper packaging like from Amazon to wrap your gifts in. 
and the best is using no wrapping paper at all and hide the gifts instead. My dad <laughs> actually started doing this for me a couple years ago because I didn't want to have any other stuff packaged. So he would have it be behind the tree and make a little scavenger hunt. And yes, I was in my 20s as well. <laughs> he did that. <laughs> oh, and here I'm gonna share the polls with you before we switch over to Alex. And awesome, holiday shopping, you guys are bringing your bags. Sometimes people forget that. And where do you do most of your shopping? Awesome, in-person and sustainable local retailers. Thank you. Great. So, and then when it comes to holiday cards, like I mentioned earlier, there's over two and a half billion that are bought every year. So looking at a good option would be to buy those homemade and seed paper cards from local shops or online marketplaces like Etsy. Um, and if you've heard of, um, if you haven't heard of seed paper before, it's actually hand homemade paper that has seeds in them. So after someone gets done reading the card that you wrote them, you can rip up the paper, put it in some soil and water it, and it'll actually start to grow. So that's kind of like a double duty gift. And then just a reminder, if you do buy online um, or from local shops, like ask them not to package in plastic, especially with um, online sites like Etsy, you can have like a note section. And I usually do this for all my orders. I just say, hey, please use as little plastic as possible when you ship me this. Um, a better option would to be make your own cards out of recyclable and upcycled material. But then again, like we were saying earlier, as, um, the guessing game, don't add like the glue or the glitter or any of like the extra pizzazz because that's what no longer makes it recyclable after. Um, and then the best is to just give someone a call and check in and say how thankful you are for them, like hearing your voice, especially with the pandemic and having to do social distancing like video calling is also a great option um, or even sending like a digital card just like avoiding the physical product is the best option and now we're going to get into some tips for shopping and the next couple of tips are foundational tips that you can do anytime but we know that the holiday season means that people are going to be shopping more so we wanted to make sure that we covered them too Awesome. And as we went over already with the shopping bags, this is for just regular shopping or holiday shopping. Carrying it out, I'm definitely known for, for getting my reusable bag myself. So then I carry everything out in my hands and then using my t-shirt as a bag. If I didn't bring, bring my reusable and then switch it into uh, my bags when I get into the car. Reeling it out, people forget that they could do it too. Really now is embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, you get you get used to the embarrassment. I've had to do it a couple of times. It just just happens if you did more than a basket that you can't fit into your hands. Definitely reel it out and then switch it to the reusable bags in your car. And then paper bag it as a last resort. You could either use it to wrap your gifts in if it's that time of year. And you could use it as um, a holder for your compost or throw it into your compost. Again, you want to be reusing it as much as possible because this type of paper, although it is recyclable, when it gets mixed into the single stream recycling, it actually gets contaminated with all like the little juices that were in like soda can bottles or just bottles in general. So then it's not as recyclable as it once was. And then again, like buying in bulk. So this is especially good for like food shopping or if you are going to be hosting any meals this holiday season, um, buy food. The good option is to buy food in 100% recyclable, compostable or reusable packaging. So thinking about like your canned vegetables or your canned beans instead of buying like frozen veggies that come in like the plastic sticking to like canned veggies instead. Um, better option would be to buy in larger quantities at grocery stores or stores like Costco and Walmart and Sam's Club. Um, the key here is buying as much at once as possible because even though it is a giant bag of rice, the amount of plastic or whatever item was used to uh, package it is less than it would have been for the smaller bag if you had multiplied them up. Um, and then the best option would be to shop in the bulk section or to buy directly from the farmer producer and then to buy from those discount stores like we were mentioning before. 
Yeah, and as Alex said, sorry, there's a <laughs> fire truck going by, if you could hear that. So buying in large quantities at Costco, anything like that is honestly kind of the same option as bulk because a lot of the bulk stuff comes in plastic bags itself. And some people within the movement, they get so into fitting something in a jar or not having big plastic waste. So they, they'll, they'll avoid it. But if you're going through that much stuff, it's fine to get the big plastic bag because that's essentially what all the bulk stuff is coming in. It's just, you're not directly getting the waste, you're indirectly creating it. And then when it comes to like Amazon and online shopping, like a good option, if you're gonna do that, go that route is to edit your shipping and packaging preferences to reduce plastic. Um, so like I was saying with Etsy shop, Etsy specifically, like there's almost usually a notes or like a comment section um, that you can leave that comment that, hey, please use less plastic. And there's actually a YouTube video on how to edit your Amazon preferences if you don't know how to already. Um, a better option would be to order from retailers that you know ship 100% plastic free, like Package Free Shop or Life Without Plastic. And again, not um, promoting consumerism, but buying from those zero waste stores does help um, the economy see that we are preferring zero waste reusable uh, retailers over um, generic retailers that do ship in plastic. Um, and then the best option would be to so shop local and do in-person pickup. So I understand we understand that some people still don't feel comfortable going into the store. So one of the things that you can do is buy from a local store, but then just go pick it up yourself. So that way you aren't contributing to the shipping packaging waste. Um, and then we wanna be clear here too, is to not over shop and then plan to return online orders. So a lot of people don't know this, but when you order items online and then you return them, the retailer is most likely not gonna spend the time to inspect your return to see if it's damaged, if it's um, clean, if it's sanitary. So they actually will probably put that item to the side and then after the season, they'll end up landfilling it or incinerating it. So just because you're not losing the money because you get your money back, it still means that that item is probably gonna go in the landfill. So it'd be best to buy little at first and then go and buy more if you need to, then to buy more all at once and then return what you don't need. Yeah. and. And this is really important with the online shopping. People are like, oh, I'll buy however many quantities and then I'll just return them. So this has become a really big race issue within the past couple of years as online shopping becomes more um, accessible and affordable compared to going to an in-person store where you could try on all this stuff and people are now sending multiple different sizes to their house. And uh, yeah, it's creating a lot of waste, plus all the extra carbon emissions for sending like single items back and forth. Now tips for eating, whether you are spending time together just with your roommates or gathering in a small group setting under eight or 10 people, depending on your COVID restrictions in the state. So important to stay safe during this time. Reusable utensils. So again, if you're, in like a small or a large group once COVID has a, isn't as a, a pandemic that we're in right now, using compostable stuff, we use this as a last option just because it still is single use, but we acknowledge that maybe you are traveling, you don't have reusable utensils with you, or again, you're gathering at a place that doesn't have access to reusable stuff. But making sure the compostable items are actually wood or bamboo and not the compostable plastics because those really aren't compostable in the long run. They need a really high temperature um, to actually break down. So go for the wood and the bamboo if you can. A better option is bringing your own utensils. This works especially during COVID times because since there's a lot of takeout options now, people are throwing, well those people are, sorry, the restaurants are throwing the plastic utensils in the bags, but you could say that you don't need them and use your reusable utensils, or even when you're going out and you're, get some, you're getting something to go, having these on you is, is really awesome. It'll save you time. My family knows that I bring my reusable tub, Tupperware and utensils with me wherever I go, because if we're eating together, if there's leftovers, 
or if there's a buffet, I don't have to worry about having plastic plates or anything single use. And the best option is using what you have. Again, you don't need to buy all this latest fancy zero waste gear to be zero waste. And you could eat with your hands, which I'm also known for doing. <laughs> So <laughs> eating with my hands, I have been told that I am a really messy eater amongst other things. So the reusable napkins and rags, like slash hankies, as I said, are my favorite thing. People really underestimate this on how much waste you really can um, eliminate by doing this. So I use, my hank I use them as hankies. I use them to clean down my surfaces within my house. I use them to wipe my face, clean my hands. They're extremely functional and versatile. So the good option, which people tend to think as the best option, is buying them new and 100% cotton cloths that can be um, burned or composted at the end of their life, depending on a compost facility. Um, cotton is a really water intensive crop. So again, try to avoid it if you can and not buy it new, but it's still a good option nonetheless. Better is buying them secondhand at thrift stores. So if you go to Goodwill, they have the thrifty rags. And again, with the zero waste movement, some people say not to buy it because it comes in a plastic bag, but in all reality, you're helping divert things from the landfill. This is stuff that they couldn't end up putting on their shelf, the things that people donate that they know they really shouldn't donate, but they want to get rid of them and they have some holes in them, they turn into rags, and you could use them all over the house to clean things or use them as your own hanky and stuff like that. And best is using what you have. I make my own reusable hankies out of t-shirts that I had, and also I found that t-shirts don't really clean my mirrors that good, so when one of my towels is on its last limb, I end up cutting it up, and I use them to clean a lot of the surfaces just because it's a little bit more absorbent too. Yeah, and then when it also comes to eating, most likely you're going to get thirsty. So we understand that most people um, don't still use packaged water, but some people still do. So we have this in here. Um, the good option is to buy in highly recyclable packaging like the aluminum cans and bottles. And that goes as well for other types of beverages like soft drinks, um, alcohol, just like looking for that um, recyclable packaging or reusable, like even the twist top aluminum waters, you can reuse that bottle. Um, a better option would be to refill at the store. So you can buy one of the big jugs and refill it at the store yourself or for sanita sanitation reasons, if they're not allowing you to bring your own container, you can buy a container from them and refill. So you're still getting that filtered water, but you're getting it in the bulk quantities. And then you can get a dolphin water pump at the top to make um, getting the liquid easier. And then the best option would be to honestly just drink the water from the tap or filtered water systems like a Brita pitcher in your fridge or charcoal filters. Um, we understand people might not have access to um, filtered tap. So that's why we just wanted to include that as the best option. But if you don't have access to the tap, you can always filter your own water and then have that in bulk for glassware or bottles. Yeah, and especially if you're already hip to this with bringing your own reusable water bottle, people around you may not be into it as much or easily forget about it. My family, we're switching more over to reusables during uh, family gatherings, but still the cases of plastic water bottles make an appearance almost every time. <laughs> so trying to wean them off of that. And it goes to, because they have um, one of the filtration systems within the refrigerator, but that takes a while to fill up and especially you have multiple people over. So having that better option is really good with being able to buy a couple of the five gallon or 10 gallon options and putting the dolphin pump on because it's still being filtered and people could use them more quickly and they're really um, transportable too. So if you're having a picnic out in the summertime with your friends or your family members, you could bring that with you instead of bringing the single use bottles. All right. So... No, we just went over a lot with you all. So we wanted to open up for any questions and feel free to, you know, unmute yourself if you want to ask, or you can also drop a question in the chat. 
Yeah, and thank you for keeping the chat so active throughout it. This was awesome to see, <laughs> see it active. Um, one thing I want to say, Emily actually sent this to me privately. I think it was meant to show everyone, but what's a good brand of silicone storage bags with a square bottom? So Stash Your Bag actually makes ones that can stand up on their own. They're, it's definitely one of my favorite ones to use. And we have links in it as well. So, and we'll send up the last poll too as some questions come in just to see how we did. We're teaching more workshops. So we would love to get your feedback. The only way that we can improve is to know how to improve and also the time frame. Like I know that we have some people in here that are in Colorado or California trying to figure out what works best for everyone. Yeah, and Marina Sam did just ask, why can't you recycle wrapping paper? Oh, yeah. So wrapping paper is usually made with multiple different stuff and has a layer of plastic on it or glitter within it. It's super shiny. And then also, like, if you feel it, you could kind of feel the plastic on it. It's subtle, kind of like how receipt paper is that way. So if you can avoid using wrapping paper, do it. If there's already wrapping paper at your house, use it up and try to reuse it. There was a time when I used to try to open my gifts up very carefully so that I could reuse um, the, the wrapping paper for years to come. And if you're wrapping with other ones, make sure that you use paper tape because that is a uh, that will actually make everything compostable or recyclable. Again, with wrapping paper too, if you still want to have it, you can usually buy it secondhand or at a liquidation center. Yeah, or, you know, like get craft paper, um, the brown material, and then you can draw on it yourself with like the fun designs if you think that that's too plain. There's definitely like room to be creative um, when it comes to like wrapping packaging. Oh, so for paper tape, we'll add this in when we send off the recording. So I'm blanking. Oh, Package Free Shop has, has paper tape. I've been thinking about the packaging stuff that we've actually been sending to clients, but you don't need to do that. You could just buy some rolls at Package Free Shop. And if you don't want to buy online, there's actually some stores, UPS, USPS, and UPS actually have pack, uh, paper tape available there. Oh, I like the daughter's work, artwork. That's awesome. And Alex, if you want to flip through to show yeah. people that we have some tips at the end. Yeah. Um, so before we get into the final reminder, just give you a teaser of what else we have in here. Um, so we have linked to some of our favorite uh, recipes. So for like your DIY hand sanitizer or disinfectant uh, wipes, you can check those out. Um, these are also things that would make great gifts. So like, um, so our favorite things for the bathroom and our favorite things for the kitchen and for just everyday living. And again, we do have at the bottom, like using what you have and shopping secondhand is priority. We're not encouraging you to purchase, but if you do need to purchase, these are great options. Um, and then just as final reminders, um, so we don't need everyone living zero waste perfectly. Um, it's great to just make progress where you can and those small changes and rethinking waste really does lead to big impact. And now that you have this knowledge, use it for good. So some of these things you might already be doing or you already thought of, but chances are there's someone in your immediate circle that is not. So inspire your family and friends to make those smart sustainability focused decisions when you have the ability to do so. And then it's really important that we collectively all start advocating for things we want to see in brands and the consumer marketplace. So ask for less plastic packaging from your favorite brands. Ask them to not ship with um, bubble mailers or with the packing peanuts. The more that we talk about this and actually talk to the brands that are doing these things, the more that they'll take notice and change. Um, Marina, if you want to touch on the stats. Yeah. Yeah. So there's definitely a big disconnect between what the consumers want and what the consumers are actually telling the brands. So in a study, 88% of companies, I mean, of 88% of consumers said they want brands to help them be more environmentally friendly. 
but only 28% of consumers said that brands were helping them be environmentally friendly. And we're conducting a market research survey right now and with businesses. So from the business side, they're saying that like less than 30% of businesses say that they're getting inter external pressure from consumers. So the consumers are saying that they want the brands to help them be more environmentally friendly, but they're not advocating for them either through emails, sending calls, or like DMing them on Instagram, which actually <laughs> works a lot. Like we've been able to switch some um, companies over or not even sell some products because we let them know that it's, it's non-recyclable or compostable. So use your voice. It really does go a long way and nothing's going to change if we just keep talking about change so definitely advocate and we have templates up on our website too that you could use to send to people to advocate for less plastic awesome well if we oh. don't have any other comments or questions uh, we just want to thank you all for joining this workshop today we're really excited to work together towards a waste-free earth um, we, like we said before, we will be sending this presentation out and we're always accessible if you have any other questions or comments that you might not want to have to ask right now. Yeah, and I want to touch on what Celia, Celia, or Celia said. It's really um, important to acknowledge that, yeah, like this time of year is based around gifts and consumptions. And I know that my dad's generation, they were used to like, wrapping a ton of gifts and giving them. It's just something about having like quantity of gifts, which is really important to them. And it's been taking me probably seven or eight years to have my dad understand that, <laughs> that I don't really need the stuff or need a ton of the gifts. Like I'd rather get one or two gifts that mean a lot to me instead of getting like 10 little gifts that I, I probably won't use. So it does take time. <laughs> And just letting people know slowly that you're wanting certain gifts and that you just want to spend time with them. I usually gift my dad experiences. Like I took him sailing this uh, summer and usually I just like do a hiking day with him or a biking day. So that costs nothing to do. So hopefully this was informative for you and that you learned a lot. As Alex said, we're available. You could hit us up on any of our social networks and stay tuned for we're gonna be doing monthly workshops. So hopefully we'll see you all in the next one. Okay, bye everyone. Awesome, thank you so bye. much. Bye, thank you.